Hello, welcome to the Washington State Office of Equity, Pro-Equity Anti-Racism, or P-E-A-R, Team Orientation Recorded Session. The original live sessions were held May 24th through 26th, as well as May 31st through June 2nd. My name is Carolyn Cole, pronouns she, her. I am the Assistant Director for Equity, Access, and Belonging in the Washington State Office of Equity. I'm going to be one of your presenters today, and I'm joined by Megan Matthews, who is going to be uh, presenting on relational partnerships. She is our Assistant Director for Shared Power Design. And so today you'll see on your title screen, um, just the title and uh, of the event for today. The slide deck we are using for recording purposes has an updated design, but it is the same content in the session materials that were provided to you. Please make sure to watch the pair team orientation session welcome video from our director, Dr. Karen A. Johnson, before watching this video. The link was shared in the email uh, that was provided to pair team members. Captions and transcript are provided for the videos uh, for accessibility. Presenters will also verbally describe visuals on the slides. I am now moving to the next slide. Let's begin. Our agenda for our recorded session today. Um, first, we will cover background information for about four minutes. Next, uh, Megan will present on relational partnerships for 15 minutes. We will talk about establishing pair teams. I will cover that in 10 minutes. And then also I will discuss meeting executive order 2204 requirements for 25 minutes. Dr. Johnson did a wonderful job of welcoming you to the pair team orientation session and providing an overview of our work in her video. Please remember to watch it if you haven't done so already. And this is the agenda for today's recorded session. So now we will be moving forward with background information. So the objective for the pair team orientation session um, really is to provide pair teams with guidance to meet executive order 2204 requirements for establishing a pair team, section 2C, conducting an initial baseline equity impact review or EIR, section 2E, and completing the pair strategic action plan template, section 2F. On this slide is just uh, an image of a bullseye with a, an arrow going through the center, just to show that we will be hitting the mark and meeting these objectives for today. Next slide. For the Washington State Office of Equity on this slide is our vision and our mission. Um, Dr. J did also eloquently describe this uh, in her welcome video, but essentially everyone in Washington, our vision is for them to have full access to the opportunities, power, and resources they need to flourish and achieve their full potential. Our mission is to promote equitable access to opportunities and resources that reduce disparities and improve outcomes statewide across state government. On this slide in your materials is also just a hyperlink to uh, the Office of Equity Statutes, Chapter 43.06D, RCW. And on the slide on the left is an image of uh, three individuals with a lightning, or excuse me, a light bulb uh, over their head, just to signify our mission and vision and values. Next, uh, this slide, we are gonna talk a little bit about the pair ecosystem. So why is it that we are here today? Why do we have Executive Order 2204? Why do we have the pair plan and playbook? It is basically to build a pair pro-equity anti-racism ecosystem in Washington state. And there's more information provided about the pair ecosystem in the one pager the, that was included in the materials for this session, as well as a text only uh, copy of the one pager as well. Essentially, the pair ecosystem is uh, a little bit different than how we understand government to really operate today. In the pair ecosystem, community is the guiding light. 
It's an interconnected system of pair values, pair service lines, and pair determinants of equity. And some of the values that have already been mentioned uh, by Dr. Jay in her welcome video, um, one of those values is absolutely love. The other pair of values are access, justice, uh, equity, dignity, belonging, and Ubuntu, which is a Nunguni Bantu word from Southern Africa, loosely translated to mean, I am because you are. Highlighting just the deeply held understanding that we are all interconnected, our destinies are interconnected, and what we do for ourselves and those that we care about also reflects to the greater society. Um, we are all responsible for each other. So the outcomes of a pair ecosystem are that all people in Washington flourish and achieve their full potential, embody pro-equity anti-racism values and enjoy peace, prosperity and possibility now and for generations to come. Moving to the next slide. Uh, and then on this slide is just uh, an icon to the left that uh, just signifies the kind of circle of um, uh, continuous values and systems in the pair ecosystem of investment and outcomes. Next slide. This slide shows uh, Executive Order 2204 Year One Timeline Agency Upcoming Milestones. So between May 1st and August 31st, uh, agencies will be focused on building pair team capacity, completing an initial baseline equity impact review or EIR by August 1st, and developing their pair strategic action plan. By September 1st, full pair teams should have already been established to be able to complete the EIR. Pair strategic action plans are due, and agencies will begin implementation of their strategic action plan. September 1st through October 31st, uh, agencies will be receiving technical assistance from the Office of Equity. On this slide is an icon of a flag to symbolize milestones. Next slide. So Executive Order 2204 Year One Timeline uh, for Office of Equity and our upcoming milestones uh, May 1st through August 31st, uh, we are going to be working on building our office capacity um, to be able to make sure that we can provide the technical assistance needed to help implement Executive Order 2204. We are hosting orientations such as the orientation here and providing, of course, a technical assistance to agencies um, on their strategic action plans. And as we move to September, First through October 31st, we will be tracking establishment of pair teams, tracking the completed pair strategic action plans, and providing technical assistance to agencies um, more in line with the implementation phase of the pair strategic action plans. Again, on this slide is an icon of a flag to symbolize more milestones. So I am actually now going to turn it over to my co-presenter, Megan Matthews, our Assistant Director for Shared Power Design. Thank you so much, Megan. Thank you, Carolyn. My name is Megan Matthews and my pronouns are she and her. Um, and as Carolyn um, introduced me earlier, I am the Assistant uh, Director for Shared Power Design with the Office of Equity. So before we moved into relational partnership, we wanted to foundation set um, with, a, with defining a couple of terms. And the first term we wanna define is the pro in pro-equity. When we talk about pro-equity, what we're talking about is being proactive. So this work is intentional and requires action. Um, and so the pro stands for being proactive for taking action. And on this slide is an icon of a action sign that you might find on a movie set. Next slide, please. We next wanna define anti-racism. You may be familiar with this term. Anti-racism again is about being intentional, taking action. Um, so um, you are actively identifying and opposing racism. This is all rooted in action. If 
if we uh, were passive and just did nothing, our systems would continue to operate as they were designed to. So in order to create the change that benefits us all, requires action. And on this slide is an icon of people holding hands together because it will take all of us. Next slide, please. So with that, let's move into relational partnership. Relational partnership is the framework for creating pair teams and for achieving a successful pair ecosystem in Washington state. And on this slide is an image of people um, with linked hands of varying skin uh, tones. Next slide, please. So our call, we're going to ask you to reimagine. So when we talk about reimagining, we want you to think about, maybe let's go back to that childlike state. Go back to your childhood. For those of us who are privileged to enjoy an innocence in their childhood, think about um, what that was, where it's filled with wonder, curiosity. Um, I used to uh, spend a lot of time looking at potato bugs. If I, that's what we called them. I don't know what you call them. And um, they would roll into little balls and then we'd wait to see how long it took them to unroll. Every little tiny thing held wonder. That's gonna be, that's the frame of mind we want you to go back to, to reimagine state government so that we can implement this pair ecosystem through relational partnership. And on this side is the icon of a light bulb. Next slide, please. We wanna call out um, that this is a separate relationship. When we talk about relational partnership, it's separate from the government to government relationship. Tribal governments have inherent sovereignty to govern their own people and their own lands. So when we talk about relational partnership, what we're referring to is people interacting with their government, not governments interacting with other governments. And on this slide is an icon of a courthouse or a symbol for a legislative building. Next slide, please. So how we're defining relational partnership. We are gonna put the people back in public service, the humanity back into what we do. So what we're talking about is empathy-centered collaboration between government and specifically those people groups who have been excluded and marginalized by government decisions and actions so that we can undo harm and advance pro-equity anti-racism outcomes. And on this slide is an icon of a Venn diagram. Next slide, please. So for those of you who are competitive, I don't have great news because we're not first to do this in Washington State, unfortunately. I'm really competitive, so I like to be first. For those of you who um, have some hesitancy about being first because of the risk that it involves, rest assured, this is already occurring around the world. So on this image is a map um, from the Center for Public Impact, who is working with governments across the United States um, to build relational partnership. And they refer in terms of shared power or co-governance you may be familiar with. That's what we're talking about when we talk about relational partnership. This is what's happening across the country. This work is already always happening, is also happening, sorry, across the world. Next slide, please. Also within Washington state, this is happening. So on this slide are examples of where um, state agencies have engaged in relational partnership with community already. The Governor's Poverty Reduction Work Group, PRWG. The Basic Income Feasibility Study was created in relational partnership with community. The task force that created the report for the foundation of the Office of Equity was done in relational partnership with community, as well as our offices, pair plan and playbook. The Department of Commerce, their Office of Homeless Youth, um, has been working with in partnership with youth to create their objectives and deliverables. And on this slide is an icon of people interacting or playing together. Next slide, please. So you might be wondering, how is this partnership? Don't partners, each partner brings something to the table? Well, I'm glad you asked. So a partner is someone who shares an investment, benefits, and risk. So on this slide, I have examples of what that might look like. So a state agency may fund the project, compensate community, and assume legal risk. The community member 
They're investing their time, energy, and they are risking their reputation if decisions or services do not serve their community well or cause harm. So they, excuse me, they are, um, they are risking their standing in the community. So really everyone's bringing something to the table here. Next slide, please. Relational partnerships is all about relationships. Think about the relationships you have in your life. How did they begin? How did they grow? How long did they take to form? What values or foundation were they established upon? Take a couple seconds and think about that. Now, when we think about that, we this can apply to friends, family, though here I'm talking about the family that you're gonna invite to your summer barbecues, the family you get along with, uh, colleagues, neighbors, professional contacts. We're asking government to do something new, but we're not asking for something that is impossible. Agencies have relationships with external partners already. Other agencies, media, other states, consultants, other employees. We're requiring agencies to invite communities into relationship. The group may be new, but relationships are not. And we are going to show you how you can begin to build those relationships intentionally. The SPICE model is part of the pair plan and playbook because it ensures comprehensive community interaction. It is the way you demonstrate you value relationships with community. You must intentionally do all five for holistic community interaction. SPICE is the how-to to relational partnership. The S stands for seek, search out new stakeholders, learn how to interact with other communities in a culturally appropriate manner. Seek is not passive. There we go again. It is active. Everything takes action and intent. We must seek out our community instead of making them somehow navigate our complex processes and systems to have a voice. The P stands for partner, working in relational partnership, which we're learning about uh, here in this video. The I stands for inform, provide updates, share information in an accessible, culturally appropriate way. Technology is, is continuously evolving, yet many of our communication pathways are antiquated. Let's update them in a way that ensures they continue to evolve as uh, advancements are made so that we can reach the largest audience possible. The C, depending on where you are as an agency or organization, can stand for connect or collaborate. If you're connecting, you're making contact to build or strengthen relationships. You may be in C if you are struggling to find um, enough community to invite onto your pair teams, you are in C for connect. If you do have an extensive community network, you may be in collaborate where you're working together to create. The E stands for engage, interact with others through activities or events to receive feedback on things that you're working to do. And on this slide is an icon of different individuals um, one is in a wheelchair because we want you to understand that your community must be diverse um, on your pair team. Next slide, please. So central to relationships. A few slides ago, I asked about relationships in your life, how they began, how they grew. I asked because those are going to be reference points for you in relationship building with community. Because there is no checklist. There is no step-by-step -step process for building relationships with others. Now people have advice and tips and things like that, but each community is unique. And because communities are not a monolith, each relationship with each individual is unique. What we're talking about is what Dr. Joy DeGroy, who wrote Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome says is hard work. This isn't about intelligence or formulas, or equations or logic models. This is about heart, feeling, empathy, and love. Dr. DeGroy also succinctly says, we blame it on the people and it's almost always the system. 
I'd like for those of you in government to think about that statement. When have you interacted with someone and realized our agency or state rules or process created a barrier for that individual? Our systems were established to serve people based upon an idea that our communities can't be trusted. So we create all kinds of criteria and regulations to prevent people from cheating. Do we know if we're being effective? How much theft is being prevented? But how many barriers do those regulations place upon people who need these services, who are in a painful or traumatizing space in their lives? All they need is to be further dehumanized, to be made to feel judged under the weight of our systems. How do we know what to change if these individuals are not part of our processes, especially as we prioritize and make decisions? And how can we engage in partnership if we don't first establish relationships? And on this slide are icons of a checklist, because there's no checklist, a heart, because this is heart work, uh, a, a person with their hands kind of raised as if they're questioning, trying to understand what's going on, and then a network. Next slide, please. So this just highlights that what you put in is what you get out values of and valuing relational partnership, which is really cool. So if you value authentic relationships and collaborative decision-making, that's what you're gonna get out of this. I do wanna pause quickly just to note the continuous growth journey. When we're children, we're taught to apologize when we make mistakes. Yet somehow a, a long time as we get older, there's almost a shame in apologizing or admitting that you're wrong, but we all do it because we're not perfect. So I wanna encourage us to free ourselves from the mindset that we're not gonna make mistakes because we are. Now we do want to um, try to solidify our processes to reduce the likelihood of mistakes, but they're gonna happen because we're not perfect. With that does come genuine accountability. So when we do mess up, own it. You may be called out, you may call yourself out, or you may call someone else out um, and that's okay. We need to be accountable for what our actions are. And on this slide is a picture of people uh, um, slapping their hands together because that's teamwork makes the dream work. Next slide, please. On this slide is an illustration of the four basic human needs for engagement. So to collaborate your, on your pair teams effectively, everyone needs to have uh, trust and feel like they are trusted to have hope and feel like they um, are hopeful. They also need to have a sense of worth and to feel competent. Have you ever participated on a work group and been really excited for what you produced only to discover that you didn't have all of the information you needed and that the product you created isn't realistic and how deflating that feels? So I wanna encourage you in your pair teams, be transparent in the information and share what needs to be shared so that your pair teams can be empowered to make the best products possible. Next slide, please. So for those of you who are familiar with sports, this analogy will make sense. Plays are strategies to score points or defend against points. These next slides provide the strategies for establishing relational partnerships. And on this slide are some tools that you would use to play different sports. So the first play, identify your biases. Based on brain science, we know we all have biases in our thinking. This is due to the automatic brain processes that form shortcuts to help us filter and process information quicker and more efficiently. Without them, we probably wouldn't be able to get through the amount of information our senses receive each day. So we all have them. There's no shame, there shouldn't be any shame in it. What are yours? Identify your biases so that they don't become barriers to forming relational partnership with, with others. And on this side, it is a um, picture of a brain with different, uh, the different sections and different colors. Next slide, please. The second place, understand your agency culture. Where are there barriers to a supportive community relational partnership? Now I'm talking about those written and spoken components, but I'm also talking about the unwritten, unspoken components 
that are no less real and no less impactful within your organizational culture. What aspects of agency culture prioritize processes, policies, and structures instead of people? So I'm thinking back to Renee Smith, who used to Renee Smith, who used to um, host human centered design workshops. Renee worked out of Results Washington. This was about four years ago, three or four years ago before COVID. Renee would say things like, instead of focusing on policies, processes, and systems, what if we instead focus on people through love in action? How would things be different if we put people first? Also, you wanna think about the decision-making structure that exclude people, especially those impacted by your decisions. And then what does the agency executive leader need to do or say to clear the way for transformation instead of assimilation? And we'll cover assimilation a little bit later. On this slide is a picture of a sign that says company culture. And also it's an icon of folks sitting at a table together. Next slide, please. Third play. Build your pair team. Now, Carolyn's going to cover this beautifully later on, but I wanted to note it is a part of the plays and where it um, sits. Next slide, please. The fourth play, grow your relationships. So have you ever had to heal a broken relationship? What did you have to do to mend or reconcile things? A lot of listening, maybe hand-holding, hugging and probably some apologizing, and maybe you even had to take some actions to reconcile those relationships. That's what we're talking about when we talk about truth, healing, and reconciliation. We're used to telling people what to do, how to do it, but it's time for us to listen to um, the folks who have been impacted by the choices that we've made um, so that we can undo harm and move forward together in the future. Next slide, please. The fifth play, set the environment. So there's some questions here that you should as a pair team, as a group, discuss together so you can create that supportive collaborative environment. The first one I wanna focus on, the, the one I wanna focus on is the first bullet. Focus on people and not policy and processes and center community. So when I talk about, this is the second time I've mentioned it, when I talk about focus on people, not policy or process, I'm not saying throw out the rules. Woohoo! We don't have to listen to any more state rules. Yeah. No, not saying that. Not saying that at all. We are a state entity. We do have to follow rules, and a lot of rules or some rules are tied to funding federally, right? What I'm saying is that we need to shift our priority to where we're focusing on people first. Oftentimes we think about creating and we have a new idea or we hear about someone who fell through our cracks and we say, well, you know, the rules and you know, RCW this and whack that and our internal policy is this and that. Let's shift that. If somebody falls through our cracks, our cracks, we should not be content with that. We need to figure out what to do to serve that individual and serve our community better. How do we get to yes? What policies need to shift, internal policies? What laws may need to shift? Maybe that might require making a phone call to the a federal department and letting them know about a barrier that's in the system, right? So how are we uh, being part of the solution? And on this slide is an icon of people with questions, with a question mark above. Next slide, please. The sixth place, educate yourself. So like we started um, this session, this section, with um, level setting and going over some defining some terms, defining some terms. Likewise, you should, as a group, read and discuss Executive Order 2204, the pair team best practices and FAQs, and the pair one pager. Next slide, please. Lastly, the seventh play, use spice. So intentionally throw, let's throw some flavor, put some spice on our community interaction. Right. Make sure that you're interacting with our communities intentionally and covering all of those um, the elements that go into community interaction of spice um, and be intentional. So the days of just doing things, taking actions, keeping ourselves busy need to be behind us. Everything that we should be doing should be done intentionally. So on this 
screen, I've included a chart. You can use it if you want, you can use something else, just basic, this is a basic chart. And look at each element of the SPICE uh, model. What are you doing as an organization currently? What's your current state? What's the vision behind, we'll say seek, how you seek out people. Are you currently doing that? Do you have a vision? What activities are currently helping you achieve your vision? What outcomes are you experiencing? And how are you measuring success? Next, next move to future. Reimagine, right? Go back to that childlike state. What is future state? What could it be? How could you as an entity seek out community? What activities would get you there? What outcomes do you hope to realize and how will you measure whether you're being effective or not? Next, go to the gap. What's the, diff what's the gap between current state and future state? What do you need to get from your current state to the future state? Next slide, please. So wrapping up relational partnership. Relational partnership is a building block for pair teams. It really is the foundation to success. Relationships take time, intention, energy, and work, right? We kept using in, uh, the example of your own personal relationships or relationships in your life, illustrating, hoping to illustrate um, what is needed to build relational partnerships with community. Relationships are living things. If you don't put in work, they will die. There's no checklist for building relationships with others. Build your strategies though. And remember spice. And on this slide is an uh, icon of a fruit bowl with a pear in it. All right, thank you, so, Mrs. Carolyn. Thank you so much, Megan. Uh, oh, I just wanted to say that uh, we are now moving towards where typically we would have a break uh, in the session. You are free now to pause and take a break if needed. Um, but you can also just continue on with this recording um, if you would like to just move forward with the materials. So take a break if you'd like and pause the video, uh, but we are, we are also going to move forward with the session materials and you can just continue uh, and press play. So thanks, Megan. We actually are gonna go right into the next slide uh, if we can just turn that over right now. Thank you so much. Okay, this is Megan Matthews again. So um, we talked about a little bit earlier, we talked about um, this being a growth journey, right? Life is a journey, right? So this implies that we're not all starting at the same place. And fortunately that is all right. Um, on the next slides, we have a couple of models to help you identify where you are um, and some uh, ideas on how you can move forward. In addition, we have some text only slides for those of you who use screen readers um, so that they're more accessible. So the first model is relational partnership maturation model. This is how we're going to move from a government led entity to a community led entity. The cool thing is that no matter where you are currently on this model, PAIR brings us to relational partnership with community. So that's really cool. So whether you're starting at intentional feedback where you only gauge community after you've done something just to see how you did, you can move to relational partnership where you're an empathy-centered collaboration, creating um, solutions together um, and where community participates in decision-making. Next slide, please. This is a text-only slide. Okay, next slide, please the relational partnership continuum. So this is really how agencies advance through the relational partnership maturation model. So the first thing we do is we're conceptualizing. So we're understanding what it is we're trying to do. You may uh, read books, attend trainings, an orientation, like your, this video. Um, you're not really taking action that's having a significant impact upon people. The next is compliance. So what do I have to do to meet the requirements, to meet the law? That's the next step is what do I, what do I have to do? The next uh, 
uh, phase is assimilation. So um, we talked mentioned assimilation earlier. This is where you know agencies are incorporating relational partnership strategies into existing organizational structure and culture. So to partner, community has to fit within existing structures and internal processes. So while agencies may be creating in partnership, these partnerships really can only exist on agencies' terms. So you're asking people to fit into your process rather than um, uh, creating a space where they can be, be themselves. So transformation, that's that beauty spot right there. That's the key. Agencies are reimagining how work is done um, to do things with people. So you are coming together with community to create something new. And that's the difference between that and assimilation. Uh, next slide, please. So these next two slides are the text only versions. And with that, I will pass it back to Carolyn Cole. All right, this is Carolyn. Thank you so much, Megan, for covering that and providing such good information that is actually really foundational to implementing Executive Order 2204 successfully because relational partnerships is actually key. Uh, we will not be able to move forward with our pair teams um, or identify the areas where we need to remove barriers and, and eliminate disparities without actually having relational partnerships with those who are impacted. So thank you very much. Um, so now in this section, I'm going to cover meeting Executive Order 2204 requirements. And it is easy as one, two, three, uh, just three steps that I'd like to outline. First, establish complete pair team. Second, complete your initial baseline equity impact review or EIR by August 1st. That is a deadline under the executive order. And step three, complete the pair strategic action plan template by September 1st. That is also a deadline under the executive order. And on this slide is an icon of uh, just a presentation of a checklist uh, just to signify the this three steps that are being outlined on this slide. So next slide. Um, Easy as one, two, three, the first step in this process is to establish your complete pair team. So in section 2C of the executive order, it states that agency leaders will be establishing and delegating authority to the pair team, re reporting directly to executive leadership comprised of agency executive leaders, the agency equity officer, employees, and external customers, partners, and experts for key business lines to assist the agency leader in achieving these goals. And uh, these are a lot of groups that you will need to have required representation for on your peer team, but I'm gonna provide a little bit more information about what it means to actually have a complete peer team and have representation from these different groups. And on this slide is an icon of just a uh, a group of hands together forming a circle um, to just signify the team, the pair team. Next slide. Relational partnership, Executive Order 2204, pair team composition. So as I noted earlier, there are a lot of different groups in the executive order um, that have been mentioned. And on this slide, they are uh, captured here on the left as a blue circle. Um, that signifies what really is your core pair team, um, the required pair team under Executive Order 2204. And it has all of the required representation groups, um, people groups in that uh, blue circle on this slide. Your agency executive leader, the agency equity officer, employees and external customers, partners and experts for key business lines. And this core pair team, um, remember, it must include representation from all of the groups listed uh, in, that, in that circle. Um, but there may be some agencies who may want to reach out to more folks, but still maintain a more manageable size for their pair team, just for the purpose of making sure they 
can meet regularly and uh, complete all the deliverables. So maybe uh, agencies will consider creating a pair team advisory group um, in addition to their core pair team. And that is represented on the right with two uh, icons of just groups of people. And this is really uh, an advisory group that is a broader group of impacted employees, community members, interested parties, and partners from public, private and academic sectors. They advise the agency core pair team um, in their decision-making. So it's okay to have a pair team advisory group. Um, I just wanted to clarify that your pair team advisory group should not be the only place where community members, um, external partners are represented. You do need actual community members and external partners to be represented on your core pair team. So if you are finding that your core pair team uh, doesn't have any representation from community members, it's just all executive members of your agency, as well as uh, just other staff, then consider inviting some of the community members and external partners you might have on your advisory group over to your core pair team. You want to make sure your core pair, pair team has the representation, even if you have also created an advisory group. Okay, so we're going to move to the next slide. A little bit more information about who needs to be on your pair team. Again, complete pair teams must be established by September 1st because you will need your full pair, complete pair team to actually uh, complete the equity impact review. And it's very important that your agency head is the leader of your pair team. We wanted to clarify and make, you know, make sure that all pair teams know their agency head is the leader of your pair team um, under Executive Order 2204. Therefore, uh, your agency head's contact information must be included in the pair team contact information that you submit to the Office of Equity. So again, you will not be able to complete the EIR without a complete pair team. Ensure that everyone um, on your pair team has attended the pair team orientation session, either the live session or that they have watched this recorded uh, video session. And uh, take, take your time also as before jumping in uh, to really assess what, who, right, who is on your pair team and it, have you actually made sure that it's a complete pair team. So next slides will cover a little bit more detail about the different groups listed in Executive Order uh, 2204. So who needs to be on your pair team? We talked about agency executive leaders, which definitely includes your agency head but essentially we're talking about um, your executive cabinet level. So that may include also your agency deputy directors, as well as your assistant directors and your assistant secretaries. Agency equity officer. Usually this is the individual in your agency who has the title of EDI or DEI director. They may be also a DEI manager, EDI administrator, consultant, specialist, analyst, or coordinator. Um, agency tribal liaison. Representation on your pair team uh, from an agency tribal liaison will be important uh, if you are going to be focused on making investments in tribal government relationships, which is actually one of the service lines, um, pair service lines in the pair plan and playbook. So once you get into the pair plan and playbook, and you see that that might be a service line that you want to invest in, um, please make sure that you have an agency tribal liaison on your pair team um, because they would be the ones knowledgeable to, about making an investment in that government to government relationship. Agency employees on your pair team, this definitely includes supervisors and managers, but also those who do not supervise or manage people or programs. And so this is important to note because oftentimes uh, staff, agency staff who are not supervisors or managers um, are left out of decision making um, at their agency for decisions that actually may impact their work directly. Um, we want to make sure the pair teams 
are also including their perspectives, their experience um, being marginalized or excluded in the decision making of your agency so that they can show and share what they know to be barriers um, so that they can be removed uh, as part of your pair strategic action plan. Next slide. External customers and clients. These are individuals impacted by your agency programs and services and organizations that advocate on behalf of these individuals. Uh, external partners. Those are individuals or groups that have an existing relationship with an agency and provide support in the agency's program or service area. And then also external experts. These are individuals outside of the agency who have subject matter knowledge uh, about your agency programs or services. So for example, uh, private and nonprofit organizations, researchers and consultants in the field related to the agency program or service area. And an example of this could be the Vera Institute uh, if they were to be represented and join the Department of Corrections pair team. So pair teams, uh, a note about all of these different groups, uh, pair teams are most transformative when they include representation from individuals who have been historically and or currently excluded and marginalized in your key business lines. So it is not enough to just have uh, individuals on your pair team who are in these different people groups described in the executive order. You really want to make sure that the individ individuals on your pair team actually have that lived experience of being excluded or marginalized in your key business lines. Um, if, if your pair team does not have that understanding, perspective, lived experience, uh, or knowledge, um, you will not be able to successfully identify um, what is really causing disparities and where the disparities are in your business lines. So next slide, establishing your pair team. We, the Office of Equity did receive a lot of questions about identifying and inviting members to your pair team. And as Megan noted, there is no checklist. So I'm here to hopefully provide a few tips for identifying and inviting members to your pair team. So the first tip really is to utilize existing relationships that employees and community organizations might already have. Um, and that is because they are already considered the kind of credible messengers. Um, and if an uh, invitation were to come from uh, and through in partnership with an employee or a community organization that already has a trusted relationship, it's more likely that you will be able to have your invitation accepted. Um, if you do not have any credibility, or existing relationship, um, an invitation to join your pair team to a community member, uh, it's not as likely that they will be uh, wanting to accept the invitation um, because there's no pre-existing relationship. Uh, utilize community engagement managers, coordinators, or offices if you have them. Um, if you have those resources available to you at your agency, and they have not been looped in to help with this effort of building your pair team, um, please reach out to them and see how that they could assist with their, um, with their capacity and their network um, to be able to help identify and invite members to your pair team. And then also, if you have a constituent relations or customer service office, it would be good to loop back with them as well and to really understand who has already reached out to you from the community with feedback, concerns, or comments. Um, for many agencies, uh, we have probably already heard or you know, community members have already attempted to reach out to us um, to let us know about the issues in your business lines, about the service that is being provided to them. And often we do not really find a way to close that feedback loop to get back to them and give them opportunities to help the agency take action to fix the problems. 
this could be an opportunity to reach out to those who have tried to reach out to us um, and to invite them to the pair team to help take action to solve those problems that they experienced. And uh, communicating an estimated initial time commitment uh, may also be important when you invite members to your pair team. And so an example of an estimated time commitment, you could say the pair team will meet twice a month and collaborate outside of scheduled meetings um, approximately five hours per week until September 1st. Um, this could be different for your pair team. Again, this is just an example, um, but you would want to give uh, folks an idea of really how much time you are asking for um, to really be able to help complete and meet the deadlines um, in Executive Order 2204. So uh, another tip, use the Office of Equities guidance. Um, we provided Executive Order 2204 and pair team best practices and FAQs guidance. Uh, we also shared the second substitute Senate bill 5793, lived experience compensation, interim guidelines and best practices. And those were shared with your agency leaders and deputy directors. And then also uh, we shared pair team orientation materials for these sessions. And please feel free to utilize those as you communicate with uh, potential members for your pair team. Next slide. Um, we're taking a moment also to answer some questions of, that we received from small agency boards and commissions. And so there has been a lot of enthusiasm and excitement from small agency boards and commissions that has been amazing to see um, because they want to create uh, pair teams and to implement the executive order. But there are some unique capacity considerations for the smaller agency boards and commissions. Um, they may have a staff that is only uh, two or three people. Um, and then maybe considering what their scope is with the authority um, that they have might be narrow and there might be questions about how you can actually make a systemic change um, if you, you're just really uh, authorized to look at one specific area, one thing um, as a agency board, small agency board or commission. So really on this slide are a couple of potential approaches, um, but we're not trying to be prescriptive. We support, you know, innovative collabor collaboration um, and look forward to different ideas that might come um, from small agency boards and commissions. So one approach could be um, as a small agency board or commission to join other small agency boards or commissions who are working in the same issue area. So an example of this that came up um, really are the different ombuds offices in Washington state. Um, they do work in the same issue area just because they are ombuds offices. Um, but maybe they could join together and be a pair team that really looks at maybe where they want to be more in alignment uh, enterprise wide on something very specific that is in common for all of their um, offices. So for example, if uh, they have addressed or seen that there are disparities related to accessibility uh, for persons with disabilities, and language access um, disparities, maybe they all want to figure out how they would all have the, the uh, shared kind of aligned standards and policies so that all the ombuds offices uh, really are have the same standard for accessibility um, and language access. That would make sense for them to be a pair team that looks at creating and making changes to the ombuds system. Now, if they would really be more interested in uh, maybe looking at disparities in the business lines of a larger agency who works in the same issue area, that could also be a way of creating a pair team. So a small agency board or commission joining a larger agency working in the same issue area. 
And that could look like, for example, um, the Office of the Corrections Ombuds, um, maybe joining the Department of Corrections um, to look at different disparities in their key business lines and being a member on their pair team to provide that perspective. Um, because as the OCO, um, the Office of the Correction Ombuds, they have access to that information. They would be able to know what clients are really experiencing, their families are experiencing, and that's really helpful knowledge uh, to be able to provide on Department of Corrections uh, care team. So just an example. And uh, there may be other possibilities you know, if you see that your work is really in alignment with uh, other small agency boards or commissions or agencies, but really what should drive the decision for collaboration should be, you know, what is the end goal? What do you want your strategic action plan to focus on? Where really is the greatest need? And which collaboration would best help address that need? And so that should be kind of the driving question when trying to determine what, uh, you know, pair team uh, could be established. All right, so step two, initial baseline equity impact review or EIR. So section 2E uh, requires by August 1st that agencies uh, complete and partner uh, with their uh, pair teams um, to complete their equity impact review. And so the, the initial baseline equity impact review or EIR was actually included in the materials for the pair team orientation. Um, and you will need to use the pair plan and playbook when it's released to complete your EIR. So let's go into a little bit more of the examples of how to use the pair plan and playbook when you are completing your EIR with your pair team. So on this slide is a proposed pair service line investment uh, for your equity impact review. And so essentially, we are turning the a finding that you might have uh, for different uh, disparities in your EIR uh, into a proposed pair service line investment that may move forward as one of the investments you will put in your pair strategic action plan. So let's say that your EIR finding, say historically impacted communities have not been engaged with and included in decision-making. You are maybe in the compliance stage of the relational partnership continuum. Maybe a proposed pair service line investment is to create dedicated positions that are required for pair teams, such as an equity officer or tribal liaison, if you don't have those positions yet, to ensure that you have complete pair team representation. So I am going to go to the handout and show where we can see that this is in alignment with the pair plan and playbook. So I am now in the handout that was included, the 2022 pair team orientation handouts document. It was included in the pair team orientation session materials. I'm going to page, scroll down to page, seven, and we just want to see where in the pair service line section of the pair plan and playbook uh, would this potential uh, investment really align. So I'm in the uh, handout just to show you snippets, um, excerpts from the pair plan and playbook that will be released. Um, and this is, this is one pair service line that is in that section. And so it's called leadership operation and services. And underneath each pair service line, there are priorities listed. And up front, we see that relational partnerships is a priority under this service line. And then we want to go and scroll down to the different investments that might support uh, these pair service line priorities. And so you see different uh, investments are listed. Again, this is just a snippet of the pair plan and playbook, the pair service line section. And we're scrolling down, scrolling, different investments, high level areas that you can focus your investments on. And we do see that pair teams is pulled out specifically as an area to invest in this particular pair service line. 
And so I know that this proposed pair service line investment would align with the pair plan and playbook. Again, this is just an example. For the repair strategic action plan, your pair team may determine that this is not uh, going to be one of the investments in your strategic action plan. Um, they might end up going with a different uh, investment. But we have just shown in this process of how to use the pair plan and playbook to make sure you're in alignment um, with the priorities and investments outlined in that uh, play, plan and playbook. So next example, going back to the slides. So let's say historically impacted communities have been engaged primarily through surveys and listening sessions that you host, right, as agencies, and you're in the assimilation stage of the relational partnership continuum. And so uh, maybe a proposed pair service line investment is to contract credible messengers and communities to lead work groups that help develop agency legislative requests. And this could really move your agency from assimilation um, to transformation in the relational partnership continuum, because it's not really an investment that is on uh, agency terms. We are really actually building relational partnerships and going to where the communities are and trusting the credible messengers already in the communities to help, help us really get good information as we co-create and plan an agency legislative request, which may have an impact on community members. And sometimes we introduce legislation uh, before actually working with communities to develop that legislation and understand the potential impacts. And so I am gonna go back to the handout again, just to make sure that this prepare, proposed pair service line investment really falls in line with the pair plan and playbook, and it doesn't get away from what has already been identified as the priorities. And so it would be the, actually the same pair service line uh, that we uh, see. It's the leadership, just scrolling back up, is the pair service line for leadership operations and services. This could, uh, EIR could really be related to uh, relational partnerships. Again, uh, we want to move forward in the relational partnership continuum. And so we know we're meeting that priority, but let's just scroll down again to investments to make sure we are aligned with some of the high level areas under this section. And so scrolling down for the investments, uh, we do see relationships and partnerships, developing complementary relationships with and supporting the work of other partners, commissions, business resource groups, uh, in pro equity, racial justice, access and belonging. So these credible messengers in our communities really could be a complementary relationship, contracting with them to support their work, um, which also helps support our work with legislative requests. Um, and maybe also in a way, it could also be an extension of your pair team, compensating credible messengers on your pair team to actually lead work groups for something very specific like agency legislative requests. So we know that this proposed pair service line investment is uh, in alignment with the pair plan and playbook. So let's move to the next example. These are all just examples. And perhaps in your EIR, you find that uh, English learner students and students with disabilities are the groups with the lowest proficiency rates in math statewide. And that actually was pulled from um, OSPI's website, the data that's on their website. So this is actually true. Um, and But maybe a proposed pair service line investment that your group might want to include and move forward in your pair strategic action plan uh, could be to create a family teacher huddle program where teachers provide families with instruction on at-home math skill building activities using materials and methods that are accessible to English learner students and students with disabilities. So this could really uh, go, we go back to the handout to really see where did I come up with this proposed pair service line investment? Well, it's in alignment with the pair plan and playbook. We're going to the section in the pair plan and playbook on pair service lines. And we want to find the pair service line that is related to this EIR finding. And so I'm just scrolling in the handouts. Uh, 
um, back to uh, now we're at the bottom of page nine. Where are where is a service line that actually is related? Well, there's actually a service line in the pair plan and playbook called public communications and education. And so we scroll down to just check out what the priority areas are. They are invest in the well being of children, early childhood development, and quality education. And the last two are actually also determinants, pair determinants of equity as well. So let's say we want to focus on the priority of quality education. Um, and we could even say early childhood development if our investment maybe is focused on pre-K students, where we do know disparities actually begin is before students actually enter kindergarten. So I'm going to scroll to the investment section. And again, these are high level areas. You want to make sure that you're aligned with in some way one of one or more of these high level areas of investments uh, in the pair plan and playbook. So I see a lot here of uh, different options, different things that we could be aligned with. And I'm just scrolling down more. Uh, different things that would support this service line and those priorities. And actually, we see here family teacher huddles is a high level model um, that could we could align with. Um, and I've just revised the language a little bit to be specific to this EIR finding. And uh, we now know that we are in alignment with the pair plan and playbook. Again, this is just one example of how you could use uh, your pair plan and playbook to turn an EIR finding into a proposed uh, pair service line investment that moves forward in your pair strategic action plan. All right, so we're moving to the next slide. So easy as one, two, three, the third step is your prepare, uh, you're completing your pair strategic action plan template by September 1st. And that is included in your uh, executive order 2204 deadlines. Um, and on this slide is just an icon of a blueprint with a pencil um, just to signify strategic planning. Um, and the next slide. So I just wanted to clarify that the pair strategic action plan template has not been released yet. It was not included in your uh, orientation session materials, but here's what to expect. You'd be completing a pair readiness checklist and reporting date of completion identifying the top three pair service line priorities and investments and performance measures you will focus on in the next year in your agency pair strategic action plan to eliminate these disparities. You'll be tracking quarterly performance on your pair service line measures, uh, your investment measures, and uh, we will plan to tentatively hold a training on just how to complete the pair strategic action plan template and quarterly reporting um, we will hold that uh, training tentatively in July, and the template will be made available at that time. And so finally, just a recap of the pair plays for success in meeting Executive Order 2204 requirements. First, establish your complete pair team. Second, build relational partnerships. Third, read the pair plan and playbook when it's released. Fourth, complete the initial baseline EIR, which was included in the orientation materials. Fifth, attend the pair strategic action plan template training when it's available. And sixth, complete the pair strategic action plan template when it is released. Um, upcoming on section 2H of the uh, executive order 2204, Remember, there will be an annual performance report to uh, report out on your 2022 performance. Um, and that is to come. That form for the annual performance report is to come. So thank you so much for watching this recording um, for the pair team orientation sessions and sharing this uh, recording with your pair team members. Um, thank you for your support as well to implement uh, Executive Order 2204 and build relational partnerships in order to create a pair ecosystem in Washington State. So thank you very much and email pair, P-E-A-R, at equity.wa.gov uh, if you have any questions. Thank you so much.
and have a great rest of your day.